Hey, yo, where Nick at? Back there in the cut. We're hitting us up right now, and, and uh, yeah, I know you're superstars. You're superstars right now. But yeah, just to jump right into it, how has your life changed since the documentary? Um, it's crazy right now. Struggled early. There's Joe Hampton inside. And putting it on the deck against Monte Cholina. Right now, well, since the show ended, um, I signed with Long Beach State. Well, didn't sign. I walked on to Long Beach State and then got a surprise scholarship um, in the middle of the season. Uh, our season went pretty good, uh, not as well as we hoped um, due to many su shutdowns due to COVID and all that stuff. Uh, as of right now, working out, grinding, doing two a days just to stay in shape. And my, my hope and my goals after my next year, I got one more year at Long Beach State after this season to go pro, G League or NBA. I'm not going to settle for overseas, but I'm going to work to get there for sure. <laughs> During the week, Mondays, I normally have a regular 2.30 workout, and then right after following the lift, Tuesdays, I have uh, rehab in the morning, followed by a workout in the afternoon. And then Wednesdays, um, I'm off in the gym, but I go lift or I vice versa. I take the lift off or I go get in the gym. Uh, Thursdays, um, about the same thing. Afternoon workout around 2.30, followed by a weight room. And then third, I mean Friday, uh, it's just a workout, get in, get out in the morning. Um, Saturday, Sunday is same thing, just working out with the trainer, off-site, you know what I'm saying, grinding, summer work. Up in the Bay of Sacramento? Really? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, you do? Yeah. yeah. My little cousin, Eric. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm going to definitely take this picture. Take, you got it for me? Yeah, I got you. Okay. All right. Woo! Big, man. Got you, sir. Definitely. Appreciate you, boss. Got you. Oh, you have definitely. Definitely. Yes, sir. Oh, man. Hey, man Congrats, bro. Grind. Keep doing of what you're doing, man. Of course. Keep doing oh, man. Congrats, man. man. You in the I'm city, pushing man. that. I'm pushing that. Yeah, nah, bet. When they open it back up, slide. Uh, All right. I'm definitely going to push that. All right. After the show, I didn't really know what the, what I was going to do, really. I didn't really have any, like, that many looks. Uh, back in 2017, I was originally supposed to go to Long Beach State. So I knew, I kind of had a perception of where I wanted to go. I knew where I fit in. And randomly, sitting down at home, I got a call from Long Beach telling me that they wanted me to come. And they told me that they didn't have any more scholarships available, which I understood. And for them to even call me and tell me to slide, that they were giving me that opportunity, I, of course I was going to take it and I was going to go in and do everything I needed to do to get a scholarship. And sh maybe like the third or fourth game of the season, I got awarded a scholarship from Coach Munson. Did you start a lot of games? <laughs> I started every game from the from, from first game of the season. <laughs> As a walk-on too, it sh shocked me. This been like your everyday schedule since. Yeah, it's the everyday since what? Since we got done season, we had like a week break. We went right back to it. We head to the weight room right now. What made you like this school over like the other ones? 
Uh, mainly my relationship with Coach Munson. Um, even though everybody knows my relationship with Coach Mosley, how it is, but Coach Munson is like another father figure type guy that uh, guided me in the right direction. And ultimately, he gave me an opportunity when no one, no one else would. After I left Penn State, I was kind of done with, with the game of basketball, really. I mean, I didn't really care too much about it. I lost the love for it, the passion for it and I gave up on myself, really. So I was going down a spiral path that I never saw myself going, and it was rocky for me. Life was real life then. So you walk this walk every day? <laughs> every day. Some guys on the team, they got like skateboards and scooters, they skate and scoot all the way through campus, but I don't do that funny. I walk on my two legs before I do that. <laughs> I always had the dream of coming to Cali, and my parents were like against it, and they didn't want me to come out here. I had a couple schools looking at me out this way, but my parents shut that down because they didn't want me to come this far at such a young age. But at that point, I said, yeah, I'm doing me, and I came to Cali, bro, <laughs> with one bag. How much money did you have? Son, I was broke. Probably had like $100 in my pocket. That was it. And I went to Pasadena City College. Luckily, one of my homies from the D.C. area was out here playing at Pasadena City College. And when he found out that I was out here, he hit me up and told me to come through and slide. So I went up there just to try it out. Because, I mean, obviously, I'm a hooper. Even though I, I wasn't feeling the game of basketball, it was just something to do for me at the time. And I still had my game, obviously. And I went out there and killed. And I picked up the Long Beach State offer. And that's when got worse for real, for real. That's, I was still in the same boat that I was doing, going down that wrong path. And committed to Long Beach State, got an offer, committed, signed, and couldn't go because I didn't go to any classes at Pasadena City College. I didn't, I was barely showing up to practice. So it was a lot, man. I wasn't putting it first and nothing like that. I was disrespecting the game, man. Ultimately, like, like I said before, the real life set in. So I was worried about other shit. I was worried about survival, really. Like, I was worried about putting money in my pocket. Like, <laughs> shit like that, how I was going to eat at night, where I was going to stay, like, stuff like that. And I got locked, every time I got locked up and put in jail, bro, I sat there with my head held high, bro, and thugging it. I ain't called my mother. My mother didn't know. My dad didn't know. Nobody knew until after the fact when obviously this show came out and. She she found out and she she was she was distraught, man. She she ain't know nothing about that. Like everything that I went through, she was she was hurt, she was feeling for me. And it was it was definitely something for her to hear <laughs> for the first time. No one knew, including your parents, she found out basically at the same time as everyone. My mom and nobody knew, but they found out when the show came on. Like, you want something like to eat? It's the 80s for Los Angeles, but it's the 90s for Inland Empire in our Valley communities. And then take a look at Wednesday. It's going to be 81 tomorrow, but then Wednesday we're back to about 75 degrees for Los Angeles, so we will be cooling down later into the week. So just two days of some warm weather. It's going to be 90 degrees out towards Riverside. My mind state was really like, like what, I mean, it was all over the place. I didn't know what I was doing. Um, I wanted to try it again. Was thinking of how everything could go good, how everything can go wrong. I had a lot going on. I was out of jail, but I was on probation. I had to check in. Um, I had to deal with that. I had to worry about getting in shape. I was overweight, 300 pounds. Not touching a ball in two and a half years can catch up to you. Like, literally, like, if you put on the ball for a day, and you try to go work out the next day, it, it's hard to get back because every day you take off is feel like two. So 
me being off two years is really like four years. Like I was so uncomfortable with the game. Um, it literally took like two months, like the whole summer for me to even get my skill and everything back. Like I never lost it. Like everything was still there, but it was rusty. Like I was rusty as hell. What's your major? Shit, right now I'm a criminal justice major. I'm taking sociology, political science. Change? No, nah, but it didn't make me deep down change. It was just a sign. Like, I mean, my mom have a, such a close knit relationship, and we have never gotten like that. I mean, through thick and thin, me and my mom have been through it all. And for her to put her number one son, like she calls me her number one son, I'm the firstborn, all that. People call me the favorite, all that other shit. But for her to put me out, it was a reality check for me. So, yeah, I I, I took it serious. At that point, I mean, I was young and dumb. I mean, you know, everything anybody told me, it went through one ear out the other one. I still wanted to do my own thing. I mean, ultimately, I had to figure it out. And that's what I did. It was me watching Dwayne Bacon. My boy, uh, he was cooking. He was with he, uh, the Charlotte Hornets at the time, I think. I was just looking like, damn, like, I remember, like, I used to play with this, this cat. Like, I remember being right there beside of him, like, watching him black out and go for 40, 50 points. I'm like, what could be? You know what I'm saying? Like, why am I sitting here on the couch? You feel me? Like, it's not no knock on him, no hating, and shit, nothing like that. Like, I was rooting for him, I still am. But it was just that moment where I was like, that could be me too. You know what I'm saying? If I just would have stayed faithful to the to the grind, or if I would have listened and did things the right way. That's when I, that was the turning point. That's when I was like, F it, I need to get back in this. Shit. I need to pick up the ball again. It took for me going back to jail for me to get out and call Coach Mosley. Like I went back, back and forth to jail three separate times. It's like I said before, the belly of the beast, and especially in LA, like it's everything you've seen on TV, bro. Like the Twin Towers is literally infested with men, like straight straight street dudes, like people from all over the world, like and all kinds of people was in there and it's full of, full of capacity. Like some people can't even sleep on a bunk at night. You got gang bangers coming up to you asking like, where you from and all that shit. You gotta tell them the truth. You can't be, you know what I'm saying? You can't be no hoe in jail. Like you gotta stand on your own too and be a man. I ain't gonna say like I was sleeping with rats, but like I could easily like just wake up out of my sleep and just see rat run by like from a distance type you know, or I could be coming out of the shower and a roach is crawling from the bottom of the shower out like as I'm taking a step down like it's just kind of the nasty shit like that you got grown men in jail like putting chemicals together to create a punch to get drunk off of like it's the worst man I don't wish that's my worst enemy for real The last game of the Big West tournament, uh, I hurt my 
knee. I got hurt. And because of that, I have to do rehab. And my rehab is just strictly just getting my legs stronger and my quads, um, everything around the knee to be able to protect it. Um, so I'll be able to play with full strength. Workouts you have today? I got another workout today at school around like 2.30. And then uh, I think I think I'm good for the day. Yeah, I think I'm straight. Two days always, man. Always gotta get that work in, man. Every day, no days off. Probably you probably get one day off. Every time. Him and Kobe. Him and Kobe probably the best ones. Lace them up, man. Lace them up. Good days, it will be the, like it would be good and bad days. It would be the same. Like bad days, I mean, at that point in time in my life, bad days would just be like family trauma, or me just not having enough money, or, you know, what I'm saying shit like that. And the good days, shit, I mean, I never got too hot because I wasn't in a position to be even happy for for like I, I went through a bad phase of depression, and that like it got to me like. I wasn't really enthusiastic about life. You know what I'm saying? The big locks, the, the big locks days, like I was just taking one day at a time, like just, just doing whatever I could to get by. Like I grew in that aspect. Like I don't have the same attitude I did before. I don't lash out. I don't respond the wrong way. And that's something that Coach Mosley taught me. Um, being at Eli, I've learned a lot. And being with him, like talking with him, praying with him, just gave me so much insight about how much better to be as a man and as a person on and off the court. So him putting me through, through tests and him nagging at me, him poking at me, him doing shit to get to me, get under my skin was purposely just so I could work on responding the right way. And I, I greatly appreciate him for that. I mean, I, I stayed not too far from the school. I didn't stay with any of the guys on the team. Me and Sean, we had our, our separate living situations. Uh, I stayed probably like seven minutes from the school, just a little short bus ride. Um, I never walked or anything like that. I Ubered sometimes, but not having any money and not being able to drive, not having a car, can get to you. So I had to take the bus some days, well, most weeks, months to eat like just to be able to get to school, get the class on time, or even get to practice. Um, it was a rough situation, but I managed. Um, I was an average regular person just trying to make it. Now the situation is different. Like I'm stable, I'm in a great situation. Scholarship, get a monthly stipend, all that. 
good stuff. So I'm not in the same position anymore. But back then, my head space was everywhere. Like I was, all, I was every day. I was trying to figure out my next dollar for the next day, for real, for real. Because whatever I would get up, it would easily go food. And just trying to find a spot to live, like going hotels to hotels or staying from couch to couch at people's houses. All that kind of stuff. Man. Joe, no kickstand, Joe, no kickstand, no kickstand. Oh. All right, Rosie. All right, Jeff. Bye, Joe. All right, I'll see you. This is the like schedule usually like, like uh, from Monday to Sunday. Every day, two days, man. Every day, Monday, Monday, Tuesday. Thursday, Friday, two a day. Hard day today, man. Oh yeah, somebody working. <laughs> if y'all in the city, DMV area, man, y'all slide down the uh, Gatesburg uh, area. Hit UD Boxing, man. Getting kids off the street. How long have you been doing this walk? For a whole year. <laughs> Are you um, the only one that doesn't have like a scooter or something? I'm the only one. Wow. I can't do that shit, you know? A lot of players go through this from the height of the game. Like so it's a lot of guys in this in the situation that I've been in when they go from the top of the top, and then whether it's injuries or they fuck up or make one mistake, and then they go unnoticed. They go to the bottom, and nobody wants to fuck with them or none of that. And like I talked about, how like I literally had everybody in my corner, like from my big brothers that I grew around playing with DC Assault, like Mike Beasley, Clint Cook. Like all those growing up with all those kind of guys, like it was hard, like losing touch and losing relationships like that, like for real. Like thinking about it now, like I'm actually thinking about it, sitting in this seat talking to you now, and it's so hard thinking about it because, like, I, I miss a lot of people. Like not those names specifically. Like I'm not name dropping Mike Beasley or Clint Cook. Like they did anything to me or anything like that. Nah, it's not like that. Those are my big bros. I love them to death. But there are other people like coaches, trainers, like people who were riding my coattail that I thought that were in my corner, you know what I'm saying? And I talked about how like you 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 basically can't really attach yourself to people. Like there's gonna be highs and lows. There's gonna be times where you're at the top of the top and people are gonna wanna mess with you and they're gonna wanna work you out and wanna coach you and do all all those kind of things. And when you f up or when you go to the bottom, those same people that you thought were in your corner, like your closest friends and family, they're gonna be ghosts. So stay true to yourself and just rock lonely, man. Just on some lonesome. Just get to it on your, by yourself. She hasn't graded one, two, and we have the. We have Project 3 due this weekend. Right. So what do you 
I've done the work out there. I'm right here in the city. All right, bet. What he said? He said he'll be in the mind. Fence and not coming to practice, I wasn't working out really. Um, I wasn't, like I said before, like I was just stepping foot back into the game and I wasn't sure if I, that's what I wanted to do because I, I lost the love and passion for it. I wasn't showing up to practice, I didn't want to. Shit, that shit was some, some extra shit I, I put in my day at the time. And I wasn't really thinking of it as a priority. Um, and then Coach Mosley, he called me and was like, yo bro, like, you gotta start showing up, you gotta get in shape, you gotta start coming to school. Things are about to change drastically for you. Like, he gave me the whole real spill. Like, look, man, last chance you wanna come film the school and you were part of it, you gotta do a feature and all this other stuff. And I was like, wow, like, that's big time. I was, from that point on, from that night on, I was like, oh yeah, let's go. Like, I'm with it, I'm back to it. And that's ultimately what I needed. Like, I needed something to push me to go harder. Get up, get up, get up, get up. I mean, it was a blessing in disguise. God did that in, 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 a, in a weird way. Um, I guess it was time for me to for me to get back and doing what I was supposed to do. What I was, I mean, ultimately, I have a God's gift. Like before, I didn't. I mean, I've always worked out and stayed in the gym and like that. But I never did the extras. My game was always a God's gift. Like everything came to me naturally. So. Like I said before, it was a blessing in disguise. God did that at the right time. Like he, I guess he even saw me going down the, the worst way possible, either dead or back in jail. So since everything that happened and the way it happened and looking back on it now, like having a show to look back and having that memory forever, everything does happen for a reason, bro. I went through what I went through in my life for a reason. I didn't make it how I wanted to make it or how other people wanted me to make it in the beginning the first time for around for a reason. God had different plans for me. He wanted me to, to see that my shit didn't stink and that I wasn't on this high horse and that anything that I did wasn't, didn't have any repercussions or consequences. So, yeah, I mean, everything happens for a reason, man. So if you down, you're going through something and you feel like life is kicking your fight adversity, respond the right way, Attack things head on, you'll come out of it on a champ. Oh God. Down, one, two, 
second and shot. Yeah, the last chance you accrued, they they were really they were really cool and open to us. So I mean, that's why I was even comfortable to even tell them my story or what I even went through. Um, there would be some long days, there would be short days. They would come by to my house, film, follow me from house to school, school from practice to extracurricular activities like out eating or messing around with the guys or whatever the case may be. Um, they would always come for specific times, like they would never linger around and make you feel uncomfortable or make you feel like you don't want to do it. Um, it was always fun, high energy. Um, right now, Sean, Sac State, KJ just, re uh, just de decommitted from USC and uh, recommitted to Texas Tech. Um, Malik is uh, at a Division One school in Michigan, I think. Either Michigan or Minnesota, one of the two. I'm not too familiar with that area or the school that he's at. Um, Jordan and Lavelle, they're at um, Chicago State. Marquise is at Nyack in New York. Ronnie is just got a, uh, he just signed to a school, NA, NAI school. Um, Mark, he got an offer. He's somewhere upstate New York, I think. The show portrayed us as being like so spaced out, um, but <laughs> we were closer than it was portrayed on the show. Like we would link up at people that people's houses and stay from after practice to about midnight and just be chilling, playing a game, just chopping it up, just building a bond. And it was just, everybody was just doing that in groups. Like, so, and when we came together, like it was easy for everyone to, to mold and gel and, and be comfortable with each other. So the team feeling and everything was great. Like, Best work right there. I love it. So I met Sean, actually, I'm sorry. I met Sean the year prior. I didn't play at Elac the year prior because I was still doing what I was doing. Like I didn't show up to anything. And me and him built a relationship that previous year before me and him played together. 
And the previous year, like, I would just see him around, like, whenever I would come around to practice or whatever, after practice, like I said, I would go chill with him or whatever, we would chop it up. And that's how we kind of built a relationship then. So when it came time for me to play with him, when I came on the team, it was easy for it because he was a familiar face. I knew him from me hanging out with him and talking to him. I knew his situation. I knew he lost his mom and his dad. I knew he was on his own. And like, over time, like, man, him just built this bond because we, we have the same love and passion for the game and we want to win so bad. And we have, we have attitude problems the same as well. Like, he doesn't do too well with responding with adversity. Well, but then now he does. Yeah, he's great now. But then, I mean, we had a lot in common. And I guess that's what brought us so close together. After the show drop, I didn't expect it to be as big as it did. Um, I got a huge fan base following. Like I got fans all over the world. It's crazy. Like I, it's it's, it's a blessing. Like it feels great. I um, mean, either help you or hurt you, and for the most part, it's helping me. Um, so with that being said, the guys we linked up out Vegas just to test out more fame or whatever. <laughs> We linked up as the group. It was me, Deshaun, Keese. We can say a whole basketball season. It took like this past this past spring or whatever spring break. Yeah, we all went out there. A couple of the guys from the show, and we had a ball, man. We had a good time together. Like I said before, the same brotherhood bond. Um, we enjoyed each other, each other's company, each other's time. Like we had it up. So when you just got out during that, like, scene in time, you haven't touched a basketball in two years? Up until that point, I haven't touched a basketball. Yeah, two, two and a half years. Let's get back on track. Okay, so what are we taking? Lifesaver! Okay, and then do we have a Still on time, right? We're still on time? Well, hopefully, yes, we should. <laughs> I mean, I, w I would tell this to people, like, any kid that, you know what I'm saying, growing up, who's not listening or whatever, who feels like everybody is in, like, who's, you know what I'm saying, yapping at them, trying to teach them something or tell them, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to just tell you this, bro. You can lead a horse to the water, but you can't make him drink. You got to figure it out on your own. Nobody's going to help you to the extent to giving you like you gotta take everything. I went through a lot of from Penn State, from injuries to getting into it with my mom, to going to jail, to picking up a basketball and then putting it down and picking it up again. Like it was a whole bunch of ups and downs. So I went from that to living the dream, having my own place. It's a lot of people that I, I grew up looking up to or idolizing and to see them looking up to me and being inspired by my story and what I went through is it's a good feeling. So the biggest lesson I've learned, I mean it wasn't you can't lead a horse to the water, you can't make him drink. The biggest lesson I learned is to never give up. Like I'm a living testimony to that. Like I've been through it all from the worst of the worst and there was the times that I did give up but ultimately at the end of the day like I didn't give up. Like I, I picked that back up and I went full throttle with it.